Welcome to The Downside. My name is Marco Cerezi. I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hello. Uh, we're also joined by a, a, a producer, Paige. Woo! Hello. Paige, is that moniker okay? Producer Paige? Sure, I love that. Uh, and then, we're so lucky. One of the, you know, we have our white whales. We have our, our Mo- white whale. Moby Dick was the guy. Yeah. And uh, very happy to have him here. Uh, Todd Berry, welcome to The Downside. Thank you for that literary reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you know the first word, the first sentence of uh, 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 Moby Dick? I don't in a way that I know it, but if you said it, I would be like, that's it. Todd, do you know it? No, I've never read no, I've never read Moby Dick. Paige? No. Wow, I'm, I feel very do smart. Do you know? What is it? Uh, uh, call me Ishmael. Yes. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. yeah, we all know it, but you know. Yeah. I, I well, uh, we, we like to say something negative to kick off the theme music. Is there anything that's bothering you today? Um, I'm not getting upgraded on my flight to LA tomorrow. This is the downside. One, two, three. <laughs> downside. downside. You're listening to the downside. The downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Uh, what? What's your airline? United. I'm a life. I'm. This is clearly a tongue-in-cheek complaint, but it is kind of. A, let's make it a real and tongue-in-cheek complaint. Let me not spell out when something's tongue in cheek, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so worried. Like, oh, does this make me sound like an asshole? But then I was like, oh, that's, that's the whole theme of the show. Exactly. Yeah. It has to be a complaining asshole, right? Yeah. Originally, yeah. it was going to be called Am I an Asshole was an idea. But then <clears throat> Are You Garbage came out. And I was like, well, okay. Um, so I'm a United Platinum Million Mile Lifetimer. Uh, and I'm number 11 on the upgrade list. I requested with these things called plus points. This is such a boring way to start the show, but <laughs> <laughs> and then you you know a couple of days before the flight, you see with the upgrade list, and it's like forty two seats available, forty one are booked, and you're number eleven. Uh huh. And so I'm going to just be in the economy plus. I'm sorry to bum all you guys out like that. Yes, listen, <laughs> it's listen. I'm though. I'm a Delta man. I'm a Delta. Most man. comics are Delta people. We were. I was just told people. Everyone said that's the reliable one. Well, yeah. Maybe I could use a backup, what, though. Yeah. I could use a second one. I thought I was going to go with American, but you're a United man. I mean, it just turned out that way. It wasn't like, I love this airline so much. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like, I, I've been with them since they were Continental Airlines. Uh-huh. Wow. Then they became United. And then, oh, well, they merged with United or got swallowed by United. So, uh, yeah, I've been... Uh, I've been with them a long time. I've always said there's uh, Spirit Airlines got purchased by a different company. I forget which one bought them. Frontier, right? Frontier. And if Frontier, if their name stops being Spirit, so many comedians' bits I know. dated forever. I know. It's going to be like gonna the gonna Pan Am. Yeah. That's going to kill a lot of them. <laughs> You're more of a Trump Airlines. Yeah, You've that, missed that yeah, one yeah, for a long yeah, time. Yeah. Um, no, I'm more of a JetBlue I like it when I can. You yeah, know. there's just not enough. I, I got know, the card, and I, I know uh, Delta is a good. I, I for whatever reason have had mainly bad experiences with United, um, so I don't like United. But I feel like you can put in any airline name and write "sucks" next to it into Google, <laughs> and you're gonna and you're gonna exactly. get eighty five thousand exactly. hits. Exactly. Yes. Um, I will say, since it's a complaint podcast, I don't know if I mentioned Delta. They, they when I got my bag, the bottom wheel was smashed mm. and destroyed, mm-hmm. and they said it, they didn't cover it. They, I mean, they d- obliterated it. Yeah. But I argued with them. I got three hundred forty dollars. There you go. Airline. Wow. That's which that's a lot. That is a lot. Um, I was well, recently. You want to hear a story? I do want to hear a story. <laughs> I was recently on a flight. Uh, I don't know where I was going, and they up. Someone came on the flight, and the, the I got a look. No, I got a text while I was sitting on the plane before it took off. It said, "You've been upgraded." So I walk up to my new seat. And uh, then this guy gets on the plane, and he's like, "Yeah, you were you took the seat of someone we didn't think was showing up, so we're moving you back." Oh no! <laughs> so I I complained. I wrote to United, and I was like, you know, and I, and I even said this is not the biggest deal in the world because I wanted to soften the blow from the eight hundred other complaint emails that I've sent them. But I said, you know, it's just a little weird to be upgraded then downgraded. Did and they, they get me ten thousand miles? They gave me. 
Wow. That's very funny. Now, you know what they can be? Tw- I think they can be 20,000 miles. That you put in the email, it's not the biggest deal. I have never put that in a complaint email in my entire life. Like, you think everyone's reaching out to them with it, the, like right. in all caps. Right. Like, the, so like, they so go, by being this like, guy's priorities make sense. Yeah. Let's give this, him some miles. This guy's an easygoing, constant yeah. complainer. <laughs> I would do like... <laughs> I would do more like this ranks third in the complaints that you have yet to address from previous flights. <laughs> but I mean, I almost didn't write to them. I was like, this is kind of a slam dunk. Like, you, what are you going to say? You upgraded me and downgraded me in front. Of, I had to walk up and walk back in front of all these people who didn't give a shit. Yeah. But I, uh, I, got a, I got a DoorDash refund in full today. It was supposed to come at 8 o'clock. It kept going back and then it hit 840 and I had to go. Yeah. I had to go. And I, I complained. I got a full refund. There you go. And I got the food. Good. So, Damn. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of complaints, before we, we talk about you and your life, I, I have a, tonight's a big night. I'm, I, I have a girlfriend, Tova Silberman. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's a late Christmas gift. And I'm taking her, I just, I kind of gave up on creative ideas. I'm taking her to a jewelry place called Catbird. I'm going to, we're going to go. I got a budget in mind. And we're gonna. I'm gonna ask the person to show us around because I'm not picking jewelry without her there. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel I hate jewelry. It's one of those things I always thought like this is bad. Mm-hmm. But then you're dating someone, and and she just wanted wanted a nice piece of jewelry. And I've had a couple girlfriends where like jewelry, it meant something. There's no way to get away from it. Mm-hmm. There's no way to get away from jewelry. And uh, I'm debating, you know, the number in my head. I get scared she's going to see something really nice, and it's above that number. And is I'm going to be just like, "Just a Christmas gift, or, an, or I mean, a Hanukkah?" No, gift just or? just a Christmas, just a Christmas, a late Christmas. But every year we got Christmas, birthday, anniversary, Valentine's Day. How That's, late is this jewelry store open? Uh, it closes at seven today. Okay. Is there an experience? Like, are you like, are they like kind of like giving you champagne? Like what's the, like, or no, no. Well, look, I was in a thrift store recently and they gave me champagne and I said, uh Oh, <laughs> and I picked up this <laughs> Wait, t-shirt. You really? I, yeah. In Los, in Los Angeles, <laughs> my sister, my sister who works at Celine first mistake, she helps me shop for things yeah. for the one time I'm on TV a year. And we, I, we've I've found this shirt. I was like, this is kind of, this is kind of cool. Price tag, $550. Oh, my God. And I, I said, I'll take another champagne yeah. before we we get the fuck out of here for Warby, for, for H&M. So you have a price in mind, and you can't say. No, I'll say this. it. I'll say it. I'm thinking 1000 Does she know you're taking her there tonight? Uh, yes, she does. Okay. This, this, this has been a prolonged gift. You know, we've been dating for two years, so we're definitely at the point where there's kind of like a, are we doing gifts for Christmas? Uh, really? Uh, I'll I'll take you to the jewelry. I think that's fun, but I mean, four is a lot every year. I talked to a couple, Caitlin Palufo and Steve Rogers. They said they talked about their gifts. They sounded great, and I was jealous. I said, "Oh, he's a better man than me." And she said they do one gift a year. One gift a year. I'll knock it out of the park. Four is a lot. Wait, why is it four? <laughs> Birthday. Uh huh. Anniversary. Oh, okay. Valentine's Day. Christmas. Oh, well. I feel like Valentine's Day and anniversary could be flowers and let's go eat yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a meal. A meal, yeah. Well, yeah. Then you've never dated my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I have not. <laughs> that would be a shocking revelation. Uh, <laughs> and it, a shittier comic would have been, uh, I haven't. Uh. <laughs> well, I, I said, I tried, it's a new, where I say, you know, my girlfriend slept with, with some comedians. Not a lot, but enough for a show. And I've tried to build that out. Like a Christmas show. A lot of Jews. Um, so what about you? What's the last, how many gifts do you get your wife a year? I don't know. I don't think I have like a number like that in mind. I like, cause we did a few things for her birthday is around, um, thanks. Her birthday is basically on Thanksgiving and then it's Christmas. So sometimes it's like between that period, we, I just do a few things, you know, a few things. Well, like, but I'm not doing like a thou- like a big, th- like, it's like this year I didn't end up doing, sometimes it's a big thing, but this year it was like a bunch of practical things that we had talked about. Like she really wanted an ottoman that could fit her sewing stuff and, you know, yeah, that, doesn't, we did see, a nice that meal, doesn't count. Like for her birthday. <laughs> ottoman, if it's something we an both auto- use. It's, it's hundreds if it's, of dollars. A nice ottoman. Are you, yeah. Like it's like. If it was for her office, but okay. it's for you too. 
Are yeah. your feet touching that ottoman? Yeah, they are. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pitched to Tova. I had all these things I wanted to get her for the podcast room for, for Christmas. And she said, that's for your podcast room. Yeah, well, she doesn't hear. She's not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend used to live here. In this apartment? In this apartment. And now it's just I live right around the corner. Studio. Both have good rents. We said, now there'll be a guest room and a podcast studio. Okay. I. Uh, what about jewelry? What's what's the is is your the wedding ring the most expensive piece of jewelry you've bought, Nicole? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much did the wedding ring cost? Uh, well, I had the diamonds from family, um, so it was just putting them ten in. bucks. No, it was like it was over a thousand. Like you, you know, put sure. it in and do all that stuff. Are you a jewelry buyer when you're in a, a relationship? No, but I am in a relationship. Thank you for bringing that up. But I, um, <laughs> I don't want to get too personal here. But the <laughs> last gift I got that was kind of like chancy like that was I. I know this. I know a designer a little bit, Rachel Antonoff, and she said she, she hooked me up with discount. And I bought my girlfriend a skirt, and I was like, "Man, this is a real chance I'm taking here." That's wild. Yeah, it's normally I would be like, "I'm not gonna even." It's like buying someone perfume. Like yeah. it's like it's so personal. But I, I, I hit it out of the park. She loves it. Oh, good. I cannot imagine <laughs> buying my girlfriend any kind of clothes. But what I did was I, I mean, I just prefaced it with like, "You do not have to like this. I won't be offended. I'm taking a chance here. What do you think?" And then, boom, home run. Did you have all the measurements, and th- or did you like? I did. I mean, I, I just kind of said she's five foot eight, and yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all that's I knew. It? That's the only measure. <laughs> that's a me- I feel like I'd have to know the four <laughs> dimensions at least. <laughs> but I, I consulted with the designer, and I think she guided me into the right size, if I recall. Oh. That's impressive. I told Tova all the time. I said, "I said you will never know if I don't like a gift. You will never know it. I will only well, you love had a traumatic it." Traumatic child. I had a tra- like- my mother. It's not just me. So my mother, I remember when I was six, I bought her for for Christmas Hanukkahs. It was like a, a she was into crossword puzzles. So I got her like a wall sized crossword puzzle that you could do over the course of your life. She could still be doing it now. And she, when she saw it, said, "Do you have the receipt? I, I, this, I'm never going to use this. I'll return this." Wow. Yeah, I'm not like someone who's going to complain about a gift. Yeah, and it was like twenty dollars. And the amount of therapy that I've paid for is far exceeds. This is for your mother, you said? For my mother. Mm -hmm. And my stepdad was constantly, okay, so my mom told me this. She, like, talked about the way uh, my stepfather proposed, and it was this. She said, and they're divorced now, so I can talk shit. Uh, She said, I was walking with, with your stepfather. We passed by a really expensive dress, and I said, oh, I want that dress. And he was like, okay, sweetheart, it's very expensive. They went out to dinner. He proposed. She said, you know what? If you buy me that dress, I'll say yes. And my mom's telling me this story at like 15. I'm like, you got to get out of this marriage now. This is a, that's the worst proposal story I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. A conditional buy an expensive dress. Yeah. So he kept trying to buy her things throughout the marriage. And she returned every single one. Wow. But that would almost make me excited to never have to buy that person a gift because I feel like you'd be like, I'm not gonna, if you're yeah. not gonna even just be gracious. Yeah, there's a freedom. Sorry to slam your gra- your your mother. Like that. <laughs> there's a freedom of like you're not gonna get it right. So who the fuck? Yeah, cares? I mean, it, uh, you return the third one after three. It's like you know, and I'm uh, I'm here's some ch- what you like candy. Here's some candy. Yeah. Does she like candy? No. <laughs> She'd return the candy. Also, this is the wrong kind of candy you got. I usually think a card, if I really sit down and I really write out a card, I feel bad. My poor mom, I already hurt her feelings a couple no. episodes ago. Yeah. She listens to this podcast, which yeah. makes up for all the yeah. all the gift returning. Yeah. Mom, I love you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get her that crossword puzzle again as like a second chance, like a therapeutic exercise to see if she can fake. In her defense, did she ever do crossword puzzles? Was that something in her? You At mean some point she did. Crossword puzzle or, or jigsaw puzzle? No crossword. Uh, it, it was like it. Looking back, if I'm being honest, yeah, I would have returned. Myself, I would have asked for the receipt. <laughs> That's a <laughs> shitty gift. <laughs> Got me I a big cro- it really is. You got to get on a step ladder to fill it in. All the times you've told me that story, I didn't realize what the gift was. That is a bad. Yeah, gift. I thought it was a jigsaw <laughs> puzzle. <laughs> well, a wall-mounted jigsaw puzzle, but that's as weird as a wall-mounted crossword puzzle. <laughs> this is a, the worst gift anyone's ever gotten. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, no, no, that sounds fun. <laughs> I, I do. I did buy some puzzles during the pandemic that have not been touched. Yeah. 
I bought like two jigsaw puzzles that I, I don't know. Those moments in the pandemic, you're like, can I become a different person for this new event in my life? And, and you thought jigsaw? I just thought your... it was fun when we went to when we went together with friends. We yeah. do did a jigsaw puzzle, but I didn't even do it really. I Other don't people do it. did Other it. People did and it. I came down and I was like, huh, we're almost done. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, by the way, quick shout out. Uh, we, we did record a live episode last night with stand-up comedian Aliyah Janine about working in and leaving the adult entertainment industry. If yes. you want to hear it or watch it, go to patreon.com slash downside. Hey, Todd. Is mine a free episode? Or yours free? Yeah, but I wouldn't think of it like, <laughs> not you know, not like you take it, whatever. It's main. You're on the main yeah. feed. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a lost leader. I'm if we put this beyond <laughs> the Patreon, we'd be rolling in cash. Yeah. yeah. You should feel free to do that. You had a podcast. Did it stop? It it did stop. Without <laughs> fanfare, it stopped. It kind of just was like, I'm not, no emails. I, hey, I Todd, bad. no I, new episode this I, week. I feel bad because I never really just said, hey, everyone, I need a break from this. I just took the break, and it's been a couple of years now. Uh huh. But I wasn't making any money. And at some point, you're like, I'm just interviewing my friends and people I know a little bit. And then, you know, you do one, then you're like, oh, now I got to do another one. Uh-huh. Tell me about I it. didn't have a setup. <laughs> you guys have like a real setup. You have a producer. I didn't have, well, I had, I did have produ- uh, a company that put it out, but that's good. And they were nice and they were helpful. And, but I, I guess it was on me. Did How you, long did you do it for? Years. A few hundred episodes. I think. Wow. Yeah. 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 I mean, if we didn't have you, Paige, we'd probably be done by now. Yeah. It's nice to have Episode a little help, eight. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she she does all pro bono completely free. I was about to ask if they're, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> that is true. See that's it's, see I wouldn't have I would have said no to this if I knew you were <laughs> exploiting we people. <laughs> well, we're all. Ex- I guess exploited. I'm not getting paid then either. With the, in in exposure, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you still got that wrestler money. You don't need cash. Uh, how many downloads are we looking at? Oh, oh God! Uh, what well, with you on it, it will there yeah, will be a that, bump. Listen to that. <laughs> Talking to me like I'm stupid. Give me, listen, give the, me the, the clips, the, the social, the clips on social media. They How many listeners? Get millions. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to still do this. How many more. listeners? I think we got like five k between, 5K, between really? five k and ten k okay. for like a hot episode. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we did get sixty million views on the podcast videos last year. So. Sixty million? Yes. Yeah. If that counts as anything, that and that's worth so like two ticket sales on the road. <laughs> believe you <laughs> me. <laughs> we get one pod fan every show. Yeah. Um, so Todd, you grew up in Florida. You were born. No, I was born in the Bronx. Born in the Bronx. Yeah. But moved to Florida. When I was eight. And, uh, did you like Florida? I can't say I liked it really. I mean, <laughs> I don't Who can. Yeah. I mean, I lived in the kind of boring suburbs and, uh. Yeah, I mean, that was, and who knows if I would have liked New York. It might have been my own makeup as a human being that made me not like it. What do you think of that? I agree. I went to the University of Miami. Oh, you did? And it was a huge mistake. Gigantic mistake. Why is that? Uh, well, I went for musical theater, so that's part of it. Yeah. But that's a separate thing. I think when I visited Miami, you're on vacation. It's warm. Right. There's palm trees. Uh and then you go there and you're like, oh, this is not who I am. Two times a year, sure. Some nice warm weather, but I'm not that guy. Yeah. I'm not sunny. Yeah, I never went to the beach. I went to the beach. In the course of four years, I went to the beach three three times. I was always like, well, where's your tan? I'm a pale guy. <laughs> <laughs> who is this, your parents? No, or? no. I don't know. I was just doing the generic <laughs> dumb voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I started comedy in North Miami Beach. Uh-huh. Not to make it about me, but no, it's fine. I am the guest on your yeah. show. <laughs> and these were this. There's the. This is the comic strip. No, this was a place called Coconuts. Coconuts. And it was in a Howard Johnson's uh, hotel. And how was that club? It was good. I mean, this was. Uh, I mean, I've told the story so many times, but I'll just. I'll say it again. No, I. Uh, <laughs> it was during the comedy boom of the late '80s. Do you know about the comedy boom? I've heard about it. I've I've never fully grasped how fantastic it was compared to now. Well, it was in uh, I mean my first open mic night I went on for like 100 people who were pumped. I didn't go on at a bar. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't pumped to see me. They were pumped for comedy in general. So what the, the way they did it was they would have their headliner show like 
headliner would come in Tuesday through Sunday or something like that. And then on like Sunday, they would have open mic, then the, the feature act, the middle act, and then the headliner. So they'd mm-hmm. have open micers to part of the regular show. Yeah. And people were just like, in, and these comics were not famous for the most part. And so they would just come to see like, it was comedy. Rah. And there was like all these one nighters. Just like, you know, someone would go into a bar and like, hey, what do you, you guys, what do you, when's your slow night? Tuesday? I'll bring in three comedians and get me a shitty PA. And Were you making good money during this boom? I mean, you just started, I guess. No, I, was, I wasn't getting good money, but I was, the fact that I was getting some money, like yeah. my first year in. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I, it was, uh, what was your question? Wh- why, why did that? boom start what what started that role oh you know that's a good question i don't even know but but there were comedy clubs everywhere and then like in florida you could come there and and tour for two months and just be in florida oh my god so you know if if you're like young person and yeah you know you've had a shitty job and that two months you spend in florida telling jokes and was this still with carson running the tonight show this is before carson this was jack parr no this was carson I've once tried to make a similar joke before, and I did not know the name of the guy before Carson. I think it was, I I think it was Jack Park. I think it was Jack Park. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, Carson must have been. I forgot when Carson went off the air, but yeah. And it sounds like a great time. I mean, it was pretty fun. It was because uh, I remember the first time I went on, I went on like a Sunday. And then I was like, and I would, I just did it as a goof. Like I know I never, ever said I want to be a comedian. Uh-huh. Um, and some people wish that I had stuck to that. Uh huh. No, I'm very, I'm pretty successful. But the uh, how old were you when you started? Twenty three. Uh huh. Yeah, like twenty three ish. What were you doing for work before that? I was. Uh, I went to University of Florida, and then I did like just temp jobs when you could get something called a temp job. And uh, what kind of stuff would you have to do? Just like, well, I was a substitute teacher also. Mm, I, did. I did that for years. Yeah, you yeah. substitute teacher. Yeah. What uh, age? In Florida, I did um, pretty much all ages, and then when I moved to New York, I, I did it again, and it was mainly like middle school and elementary school, and it's pretty, it was, the, weirdly, the schools in Florida were better <clears throat> than the ones in New York. Really? Well, they just never, in Florida, if you showed up to substitute teach, there would be lesson plans or something, the teacher would leave something for you. So at least you had like, I know you got to chapter three yesterday, so we're doing chapter four. They'd be like, oh, this is, we're still doing this. New York, you just show up and you're like thrown to the wolves. Sure. And I think I had like one or two people leave me anything in the years that I did it there in New York. What kind of teacher were you? I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I was one who surrendered pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, my name's Fartface. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah. Fartface. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, there were a few times in in New York where I just looked, tried to get them in order, and like they were just maniacs. And then you're just like, you know, if you didn't leave me lesson plans, yeah, and uh, they're being shitty, what am I going to like turn them into great people or a great class of polite people? So I just kind of, uh, I'd sit there and let them kill each other. <laughs> yeah, just no teaching at all. Just I mean, sit back. I, I mean, I feel like well, it's if not my no plan. Yeah, I feel like, like it's, if you yeah, if it's not my job. Oh, well, I guess it is my job, but. <laughs> <laughs> to teach it's not my, uh, as a teacher was not my job to teach <laughs> yeah but i mean if you're like leaving if you're got a cold or whatever reason you're taking off and you just can't even like write something up or leave me a note i mean i tried sometimes but they they just saw it the way people see substitute teachers like party time yeah and if there's 30 of them and one of me were you ever funny? You ever like? Do you think like if you look back, you'd be like, "Oh wow!" It's funny. I did this show called Spotlight Cafe, which was a like one of the. It was like a Channel Nine stand-up show. Like just comics went on there, and basically most of us bombed. Like it was notoriously rough. It was like an evening at the Improv kind of. Yeah, that kind of show where it's just a bunch. Of, and I did it, and like I was still teaching, and then like for some reason, like all these kids happened to see it. So I was like, "Mr. Brad, so on TV, like." Uh, that's respect. Yeah, that was kind of cool, but it was also embarrassing. Like, what are you doing? You're watching stand up on TV. You're like seven, you know. But I had, I had a God. I hope this person doesn't hear it. I had like a singing teacher, and I really respected them. And then I saw them in a community theater musical production, and it was so bad that I couldn't even look them in the eye for the rest of my time at that school. Wow. It 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 was really, it was How really shocking. How old were you? 
Uh, high school. Oh, this must have been really bad. Oh God, I have this horror of like this person hearing it because they were very sweet. School, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You, you, like, I, it was yeah. just like it was like true. I've only seen a couple like real community theater, like highly produced community theater. Uh-huh. They they rehearsed for weeks. I used to see that in Florida, like community theater. Was, yeah, you know, just like or any sort of theater in Florida is just so much like they used to have to tell people to not open candy, you know, because the older people. Would like they for some reason they loved sour balls, mm. and they loved bringing them to a play, and you just sure. s- 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 for like ten minutes and just <laughs> maddening. Are you a man of the theater? I like to. I don't. I haven't been to a lot of theater. I was kind of in a couple of plays in college, and uh, I kind of want to be in a play. I don't even know how to get in a play. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of Broadway Listen, casting directors listening to this. I don't to mean this. to criticize your <laughs> <laughs> approach. <laughs> You're like, this is how I got the wrestler. I was on a podcast. You're like, I'd love to work with Mickey Rourke. Any 5,000 people produce theater? <laughs> uh, you do want to do a play. Yeah, I really do. I saw Jim Gaffigan on Broadway years ago. And really? It was fucking good. What did he do? This championship season, I think it was. But he was him, Brian Cox, I believe, and Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, my God. And... One other person whose name I'm forgetting, but he was just, this, it wasn't like, oh, Jim's kind of on stage and it's Comic Con. It was like, this guy's good. We, you'd yeah. like it to be like an ensemble? Yeah, it was thing. an ensemble thing, but okay. he, he was he was great. He had some, there was some movie he did recently where I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, shit. It was like intense. Yeah. Some comics could do it and some comics, it's rough. Yeah, I don't know how he does it in general. Like, he's, he's con- perpetually on tour, has five kids, and makes eight movies a year also, somehow. The kids must be helping. I can't imagine having five kids and not having some of them captioning some of these videos. <laughs> They're doing something. I God, can you imagine to going on tour? You you got to succeed to bring five kids and a wife on the road. That's so much money everywhere you go. Yeah, I think he had he had a joke in the last one. He said like his wife wanted to go to Hawaii, and he said he realized it was cheaper than a divorce. Uh, but he's a good actor. I, I remember there was that documentary about. Um, uh, uh, Gary Shandling, mm-hmm. and he like he desperately wanted to be like a great actor. It seemed like he, it seemed like it really bugged him that he didn't quite click into it. Really, he was good on the Larry Sanders show. I mean, I know that firsthand because I was on two episodes. But the uh huh, you brought it up. It was just like in the documentary, he was he was like talking to Jerry Se- and Seinfeld. Like seems to hate. He's just like acting as nothing. Uh, do you? What's a dream role? Can you think of a play that you're like? Do you want to go on stage? I want to go on stage and yell. Oh, I think really? that's why I want to wow. act. Well, you. I want to do a mammoth where I go. What the fuck, you? I've seen you on stage as a comic. <laughs> you think you? Yeah, I, I, don't you have that cover? I think you got that. Idea. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't gotten <laughs> that out of your system. Yet. I haven't gotten it's that. The, it's that yet. I, <laughs> you, I feel like you'd want to do something different, but I don't know. But, well, yeah, I think it's stand-up. I think you, I am doing the thing that, like, I wanted to do. That's why I, like, you know, am all movie. Because I'm like, I just wanted to be a dancer. Mm. And this is the one place where I, I can do that. Mm. I don't know my dream. I'd probably either something really funny or something dramatic. So basically anything is what I just <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I covered 99% yeah. of theater. Would you, I, I would see Todd Berry in Death of a Salesman. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I think I need to do this. Um, that one's been done before, so I'm going to turn that down. <laughs> sure. Uh, what's your What's your dream play? Yeah, you know, I don't know because I feel like I at one point had those kind of things in my head, but I agree. There's things like like Death of a Salesman or some of those kind of older play. I'm like, I have no interest actually in seeing them, so I really don't have an interest. Well, in the guy doing who kills them. the rabbit in, of mice and men. <sighs> You want me to play Lenny from <laughs> Mice and Men? I think I could do that, but I don't really want to do that. I saw sure. that on Broadway with James Franco James. and Chris O'Dowd. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Because I, d- I DM'd Chris O'Dowd to see if I could get me tickets. And he gave, he gave me tickets. Or I bought them, but they were whatever, house seats, whatever. But yeah. uh, it's just weird because Broadway, the people, I mean, when James Fran- Franco walked out, you heard, we love you, James. Like, it's a play, man. Yeah. It's not a fucking... In sync concert yeah. and whenever they were around, but uh. I knew a guy who did a uh, was on a Broadway show, and Steve Buscemi re- mess like saw was was like I want to see your show, and sent him a message, and um, then this guy that I knew 
like you don't get free tickets to Broadway shows. So he ended up buying Steve Buscemi. He like, yeah, I'll get you tickets, man. And then he just had to buy Steve Buscemi tickets, which like Steve Buscemi didn't know, obviously. But like most people just assume if you're in the show, you can get him tickets. But, uh, but I think Steve Buscemi probably knows the way Broadway works. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> that is funny. That is funny. He would know yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true, actually. Like he's probably, probably so. in on that secret of that Broadway secret. I could see doing that, but then I would somehow get a friend to say near Steve, like, did you hear he bought Steve tickets? Because I feel like if Steve found that out, he'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Let me take you out to dinner. Put you in a movie. Um, so, okay, we covered your acting dream aspiration. So you were in Florida. You're doing comedy. Uh -huh. When were you in a band? Um, I was in a band, I guess, when I was like 20 between college semester. No, I think I was, I think may have been when I was like 18 or 19. I don't even remember, honestly. And 18 to 23 or something, somewhere in there. I was sure. In bands. I was in a couple of bands. And, and you were drumming? Yeah, and that, uh, poorly, but yeah. Really? Actually poorly? Or you just Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm the last, the least humble person in the world. No, I am. <laughs> I was, it was kind of like, yeah, I was say poorly, yeah, because I watch people now and they're just like, oh my, like I, like another language you speak. Yeah. Otherworldly kind of amazing. Yeah, I was just kind of a nervous, uh, on, I mean, yeah, I was a little nervous drummer. <laughs> Do you have drumsticks at the house? Drumsticks? I have drumsticks at the house, and then I have in storage in Florida, I have a drum set. Really? Yeah, that's just sitting there, and I'm paying for a storage unit because I can't get rid of them. Yeah, I'm too emotionally attached to it. Do you go down to Florida often? Is your family still there? They, well, they're, no, no, they're not there anymore. But, but you have a storage unit just of a of just one drum set. It has drum set and whatever my dad uh, cleared out of the, my room. Uh huh. And then yeah, so I should. I was I was thinking of going down there and just grabbing everything and driving up, sure. and merging it with a storage unit in New York. Yeah. Do you have a storage unit? Uh, I have one in my building here in oh, New York. In your building? Yeah, I have one too. Ooh, and I, have, yeah. I have like three or four it's going really on right away. I mean, that's what kind of this place, Tova was like, she doesn't want this place to become a storage unit, but it's going to become a storage unit. Yeah. I got too many shoes. Too many shoes? Yeah. You do? I'm into shoes. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, that's I, all I know. That's the only thing I can look at and go like, that's cool. Like those kind of shoes? Like sneaker shoes or sneakers? Uh, you sneaker mean my shoes? Late Show with sneakers. James Corden shoes? Sneaker shoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, sneaker shoes. Uh yeah, I just, it's all I know. Do you line up? And are Because I walk by these stores where there's a line at midnight I, and people sleeping to get whatever they're... I will avoid all lines for the rest of my life. I could not imagine lining up for clothes. If I'm ever in line for clothes. How do you find them? Uh, there's, a, there's all sorts of stores. And my sister, who works at Celine, <clears throat> who brought what me to What is Celine that, now? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Celine, it's like uh, super high-end uh, uh, fashion sales. For? For like... Like like the jacket is forty oh, thousand okay. dollars. Yeah. Celebrities and their stylists go in, and they they usually like get discounts or get it for free. My girl, my 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 uh, uh, my sister, she will like fly to like France to make sure a dress is properly moved because oh it's God. six figures, mm. and uh, it's not convenient because she can't get me. She cannot buy me anything <coughs> at the store, but she deals with a lot of celebrities, including Jeff Goldblum. Just really? for reference, I um, paid five hundred dollars for a pair of Celine sunglasses. So. Why'd you do that? Because I really liked them. How long did you have them before you lost them? No, I still have them. All right, damn. But that's that, just how much the sunglasses that's cost. That's crazy, and that's like the cheapest thing in Celine. Did you like? They were that nice. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. It's an investment. Every year, my mom gets me three <laughs> to five shirts, and my wife gets me three to five shirts. And I just cycle out the old ones, and that's how I live my life. You never buy shirts, <laughs> basically. I mean, I it's I cl I don't have a like a thing for it. I don't have like a mind for it. I don't have like a I don't see it something and think I want to wear that. Like I've told yeah. you before, I would if I could. I might just start wearing like a uniform every day. Warren sure. Beatty used to do that. What just because I'm like I, I wear I black t shirt and jeans is is how I'd like to live my life mainly most of the time. Sure. I like this. I like if it's comfortable. 
don't don't give up like that, Russell. I'm not giving up. I just There's don't. a degree. If you're just going to wear black shirts for the rest of your life, you need to make a billion dollars. You should point out that he's wearing a gray sweater and blue jeans. It's not really. It's not, really, <laughs> it's not like I'm doing something well, wildly different today. I'm laundry day. A charcoal gray laundry sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a nice sweater. Into blue. No, it's nice, but it's not like he's doing something wildly different. Yeah, than yeah. All black. I don't know. I just that's my point. On yeah. That. By the way, that's the only reason I'm wearing this is because I'm going out to that jewelry and then a nice dinner. Where are you going to dinner? I love talking about food. And uh, okay, too. sure. I'll tell you. I got to look it up. Well, uh, we're doing this stupid fucking diet, Whole Thirty. Have you ever heard of Whole Thirty? No, but uh, yeah, I have. I know people have done it. Yeah, and right. we're doing we're doing a an abridged version of Whole Thirty, where you can eat anything you want. <laughs> exactly, uh, especially on the road. She she joined me on the on the road. We, I was in Magoobies this past weekend, yeah. and like she she <laughs> what what's that look? I just that name is funny. I mean, I, I like. I like they add joke house, so it's Magoobies joke house. But Magoobies, that's great. Yeah, it's but it, I think it's also okay to laugh. It's not disrespectful to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I mean, I, I imagine Magooby, whoever that yeah. is, might be. Oh. You don't have reverence. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna be like, hey, well, you talk about Magoobies here, okay? <laughs> the Magoobies. I'm going to. It's called Bowery Road. Oh, I know where that is. It's on Union Square. God damn, that's I could I couldn't do that in a million. It's like years. Fourth Avenue, right? Yeah, I almost went there and then I, I didn't go inside. <laughs> when I realized it was not even close to the Bowery, I was like, I was, I was like, well, I'm on like 13th Street, and the Bowery's ended hours ago. What's What's the best place? What's that food might be good. I have no idea whether it's a good restaurant. Or not. Sure. So I, I've never been there, so I'm not. But tell us your New York recommendations. Oh my God, I have a oh, I'm gonna panic now. Uh, do you like Italian food? No. Seriously? I don't. It's I, weird. Oh, because oh, you have an eating disorder. You don't like food. <laughs> you don't I don't like... need pasta to me. Yeah. Is, uh, He's weird about It's an food. indulgence. It's too much. Too uh, much? It's like it's like if I sat down and I said, loaf of bread tonight. Have a, have a slice. I can get pasta. <laughs> so, you're always, so, so you're always on Whole30 then? I, I'll do ramen. I don't know. I grew up eating ravioli. My had a, my dad, divorced parents. All my dad knew how to make was ravioli. So every day of my life as a kid, when I was at my dad's, I eat ravioli for there's, lunch, ravioli not, for dinner. There's not ravioli is. I don't even know what you're saying. I'm saying you're like saying the, canned ravioli compared to like yeah, right. it wasn't canned. It's it wasn't not, canned. Those are it was not things that you can say in it, the same. It wasn't Chef Boyardee. We didn't grow up in upstate New oh, York. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was like. It was it was in the nice package. It had like an Italian woman on the front. You put it in it's a boiling pot of water. How often would you have ravioli? Seriously. I mean, I mean, so if I saw my dad six days every two weeks, I had ravioli seven times. Really, yeah. seven times. Because he'd pack it for school. Oh, really? He'd pack it. I had I had this. So you're scarred, is what you're saying? Yeah. A scarred. You'd he'd pack it in this container where it's something about tomato sauce. When it's like gets a little cold, oh, well, the I'm smell on, I'm with is you like right there. <sighs> yeah, so, I don't like whole tomatoes or chunky tomatoes either. Whole? What about grape? Cherry? No, I like, I like ketchup. <laughs> I like smooth <laughs> tomato sauce. Mm. And that, yeah, I don't like marinara sauce, although I can tolerate it. See, I like sushi, and you don't like sushi. I don't like sushi. I've tried three, I think, three times to like sushi, but. Uh, once I tried, um, my girlfriend, I took me to, well, I, I don't know if I took her or she took me, but ceviche, I never had it. Mm. It's like one of her favorite things. I'm going to be like, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to do this for her. It was kind of like, mm, it was all right. Uh -huh. but it's sort of sushi-esque, right? Yeah. You like sushi? I like sushi, yeah. I want to like sushi. I, I mean, I know I do a bit about, I did a bit about that, but yeah, it's just beautiful food. And it's, sometimes they, I went to one where they gave you one piece at a time and they told you the whole story. Oh, yeah. is that an omakase? Yeah. There's yeah. popping up everywhere. Yeah. That's like, what it's called? That's the, is that's that the what kind the, of, yeah, the, uh, the experience, uh, isn't it? The, I like, think so, yeah. 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 You see, like when you walk by these Japanese restaurants, you see a counter and. And there's like not that many seats. You let me lecture sit. you guys about Japanese food. Which <laughs> 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 I've eaten it three times. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly or what. You ever had Japanese curry? Oh, man. That's good. You ever had it? I don't think so. You ever had it? I'm not a curry person. All right. What's well. the definition of curry? <laughs> the definition of curry? I mean, but like, what, is, what does curry mean? What does that mean, the word curry? I, they would know? <laughs> Nobody knows. Why are you, why do we have to know? I don't know. I'm just curious. I don't know what curry is. I don't know what you mean. Like, what does Japanese curry mean? It's, um, 
it's kind of in a sauce. I don't know how they make it. And you can, sometimes you can adjust the spice level and you can get like, it's very simple. It's a sauce. And then you can get like chicken katsu, which is like strips of mm. pan fried chicken in the sauce. And it's served with rice. And it's just simple, f- fucking great comfort food. <laughs> Am I allowed to curse? Yeah. yeah. I dropped an F-bomb. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's what happened this weekend. We tried to do the, the whole 30, and I think being on the road and doing any of this shit is really hard. So where, what are you going to get at the restaurant tonight? Did you already look at their menu? I, I saw a picture, and it, it, it was I looked up restaurants that have good whole 30 options. Oh, really? You didn't look at the menu? The, the, the Yelp said it's fine. I don't, you got to look at the menu ahead of time. Listen. Don't you get excited? Don't you think like... Ooh, look at all these things. I don't always like, I mean, I have mixed feelings about looking at the menu ahead of time. There's part of me that loves it, and there's part of me that's like, well, that kind of kills the whole, like, what, what's going to happen when I open this menu? I understand. I think, though, if you're specifically have, you oh, know, yeah. Tova has the cilantro thing, I feel like cilantro, she can't, menu, doesn't eat cilantro, oh my God. allergic to melons, does she, dates. Does she say it tastes like soap? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deal breaker. But I, she, I love cilantro. Me too. And when I when I when she's when I'm not with her, I like I get cilantro on everything. What about onions? She'll do onions. I love onions. I'm not picky at all. Thank Except God. If I was eat, picky, we'd be fucked. It's Except you don't end. eat pasta. You don't eat. <laughs> I don't eat the best food in the world, yeah. but I am. I'm not picky. I'm not the food. That, I don't eat the food that a hundred percent of people like. Yeah. Um, when you're on the road, are you going? Are you a healthy eater? Or are you? I use the road. I mean, like two nights in a row, I had burgers and fries. I had burger and fry yesterday. I think I had one the night before, the day before, but, but I wasn't on the road. I, uh, to answer your question is no. But today, like I had a salad. I went to Sweet Green. Sweet Green. Mm-hmm. And, I, had and I used to like Sweet Green. Salad. We've complained about Sweet Green on Why'd the pod. Why would you complain? I, I, I was with Sweet Green from the beginning uh, in D.C. where it started uh-huh. as a yogurt place. Fun fact, salads were a side thing that really? took over. Wow. And I remember when it was good, the bowls were big, and then one day the bowl changed, and it's smaller. And they say it's not. Oh, I had plenty I had plenty of salad. Did you get it in person? Yeah, <laughs> live and in person. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed uh, um, I have Sweet Green often because there's one near the theater. Um, but in All between, right, you're an actor. We get it. Okay. Well, um, in between shows, sometimes I order <laughs> oh it, my God. so I don't have to leave. Um, but uh, I, it's way worse if I order it, so I have to go in person. Yeah, I like sitting. You have to be. You I have wanted, to like advise. I don't. That food doesn't travel super well. No. I'm it, sorry. You have to advise. Well, what are you saying to them as they're putting it, in the lettuce? Anytime it comes for whatever reason, I don't know why. Just me being there, it, it tastes better. But when it comes, it's definitely smaller. And there's like they give you a tiny little thing of dressing, and it's not enough. And you know, so one day, let me ask you this sweet green question. <laughs> I find they always ask light, medium, or heavy on the dressing. Yes, I used to say medium, and it was too much. So this time I said light, and it was too much. I don't think they have a pre. I don't think they have a standard. I think you have to stop them. Well, I think you have to be. Yeah. Uh, the, you have to be. I always say medium, but if I w- wouldn't cut them off, I think they would keep going. And it's just they stir it forever. Yeah. But that the the they say tell me when to stop and this bottle it's the hole is too loose because it's like immediately you've hit heavy and you're like stop stop <laughs> dear God you could just go dressing on the side uh, sure I do just two uh, two lime squeezes oh I did two oh my God. today you don't do dressing <laughs> oh you mean that's your whole thing oh my God sometimes I suddenly put on the lime and I go you know what this is enough nature did it for me that's weird because I asked for the lime squeeze today she goes you want one or two I go one's fine she's like you sure you don't want two I'm like I feel like you want me to have two let's do two <laughs> yeah she was so nice this oh my God you like having fun with the yeah I mean <laughs> like well, I yeah why not. I might as well do. <laughs> You know, pe- people tweet about, one, you know, they'll be like, I want them to go. Todd Barry came in today. And, was, and also, she had no idea who I was. <laughs> On the way, you said, feel free to tweet about it. <laughs> I remember when we first met, you, I, this is, I was early in comedy. I didn't, I didn't know the, the politeness, but you followed me on Twitter. I think I posted Todd Barry followed me on Twitter, and you immediately unfollowed well, I, it me. Was, <laughs> that's and true. And you said, sorry, accidental thumb follow <laughs> happens all the time. Uh, I mean, it was an accidental follow. I, I, I've since, it really was. No, I didn't know it was actually an accident. Oh, yeah, it was true. No, it was really. I wasn't like being a dick. No, I mean, I actually, I just, <laughs> no, sometimes you flip it. Sometimes you're flipping through and you're like, yeah. I've done that before. And you're yeah. like, 
because I've had it where you you accidentally follow someone, and then someone writes you, "Hey man, it's so cool you follow me." Like, I followed you. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. exactly what I did. So uh, no, I was truly an act. I've since refollowed you. Yes. Oh yeah. I I didn't announce it this time. I also but heard you. Uh, I don't know if I should tell this publicly, but I, I walked by you the other day while you're on the phone, and I heard something that was really embarrassing. Oh my god! Oh my but god. I don't have to say it. No, say no, it. No, please say it. It wasn't like immoral or anything. But <laughs> I walked by you on. Uh, I think it was Bleaker or West Third about a week, and you were on the phone, and this is what you said as I passed. You're like, "That's gonna be my driving force this year." Oh, and I was like, my. "Oh man, that's whatever he just said." Oh my god, you. who are you talking? That to? must have been brutal. That conversation. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I don't know. That's you can like, cut this out if I. No, no, no. Game. It's it's fine. I I you talk loud. On I could have been talking to you. Maybe I could have been talking to you. I could have been, you know, what saying was it? It, it? I was something like getting Todd Berry on the show is my driving force this year. I was like, is that a phrase you use a lot? I've never used that phrase. It's an interesting. It phrase. was. It must have been around the new year, and you know, that first month you make, you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this year. You know what, my driving force is going to be. Well, you this already year? did it. If, it, if getting <laughs> top buried, the then I'm done. Your driving force. I'm, I'm also, I'm also the only person who would make fun of someone for just using the phrase "driving force." <laughs> no, it's a crazy. It's a. It's a. It's. It's. It's an, it's an American phrase. psycho type phrase to use. Yeah. It just seemed like oh, he's one of these fucking motivated lunatics. He is, yeah. You are motivated to a degree? Yeah, I am. To a, to a, yeah, I am. Can you tell me about the end of the comedy boom? And did you feel it? Uh, no. I mean, I've always had. I mean, that no, it wasn't a thing where. I, I mean, pl- I guess places close. I left. I guess before it ended in Florida. Because coconuts, fa- that was gone. Because I went from coconuts, where you call up and go, "I want to be a comedian," and you call them up on Saturday, and they go, "You're going to be a comedian tomorrow." <laughs> In her open mic. Like, I mean, it was just easy to get on stage. Yeah. So then I moved to New York kind of too soon after a year. And then I was trying to get on, like, Catch a Rising Star, which was a big club. In, yeah. In this in the city. It was a really great club. But it was also, like, it was just a way more competitive. And Was it a, was it a fantastic club? It was really good. I mean, just all everyone played there. And, it was just, it, you know, that music and... My manager, Rick Dorfman, he, he tried comedy for a year. And he was talking about Catch. Yeah. And then they moved to a different location in Chelsea. But... Is event. that what fucked them up? I don't know what fucked I mean, I don't know the business. When did they close? God. It, they closed maybe 25 years ago or something. I don't know. Mm. 20 years ago? But 25 maybe? I just think I've finally... You have been in stand-up for like eight years now. Eight years? Oh, my God. I know. Like you're an open micer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I've, I've definitely now hit that place where I'm like, I've worked clubs that have closed. Yeah, I, I started to feel the ecosystem. Yeah. I did Looney Bin, Oklahoma City. It's the first club that I've performed at that is no longer. Wow. Were there any chains that you miss? Any? It was Coconuts. Was it a good chain or was it? A, forget. It was good. Yeah, I mean they, they they were nice and the crowds were great and and then so then I like I did a Sunday then I did Monday at the comic strip. This, the first comic strip was in Fort Lauderdale. That was the first one. I believe that's the first one. Yeah, I think I'm right about that. It's one of the first comedy clubs in the country, actually. Mm. So I did that, and then there was this really good club in West Palm Beach called um, the Comedy Corner, and okay. I did that like on Tuesday. So I did like three in a row the first week of comedy. Wild. But they, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, then I always wonder, like, did I? Maybe I'm just making all this shit up. But that, not that that's. I'd make up something better than that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I did three sets. Big whoop. Who gives a shit? <laughs> but th- that club was really good and then like everyone went through there but th- but I I was able to get sort of like middle work mm-hmm. pretty quickly but I also remember just being on stage and just like cuz th- you just get these gigs where you don't say which jokes am I doing tonight you're doing everything you've written yeah mm-hmm. and then yeah. I just remember being on stage and kind of bombing and you just kind of look down at your watch like oh fuck like I'm not even close to done, and I'm like I've got like one joke left. And yeah, I don't, I don't know how I got through it, but I mean, I didn't do crowd work back then. I didn't steal jokes. So I don't know how I did it. Maybe I riffed, but was there a lot of joke stealing? There was a, yeah, there was some joke stealing. Yeah, and, yeah. And there was a couple like really brazen people who were just like doing chunks of people's material. Was that just because there was less internet? Le- like, they were like, well, eh, they probably won't catch me if they're not here. I mean, I guess you if know? you're the type of person that's doing that, you're going to do it anyway. But they were, yeah, there probably was less worry that yeah, someone yeah. would find out. But I mean, they would, I mean, they would do jokes by like that guy who headlined before, you oh. know, like 
a week ago or something. <laughs> of all the comedians right. that you could steal from, you're like the guy who was just here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it, or who had been there recently or whatever. But yeah, and then there was people who like, I remember some guy who was there who was telling my friend, is like, yeah, you know, you write, you do write some jokes, then you steal like 20% of your jokes. Oh like he was God. telling a guy how to put the put an hour together. You'll steal 20 and then you do. <laughs> okay. I, I certainly know the feeling where like, I'll do like some weird corporate gig for like 20 people in the middle of nowhere. And like sometimes I would, I never do it because it's like, you're like, I would never do this thing. But there's a feeling of like, no one would ever know if, if some line fit in really good here, this is like an ice. No, these people will never even see a comedy show again, but then we all know the rules. But I understand like, if there was no internet, oh, I I've could had, see. Yeah, I mean, I've had people confess to me. I'm not going to mention names, but people say, "Hey, I did your joke, man. I was, I was just panicked, and I did your joke." And you just kind of like, "All right, I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm supposed to say to you right now." But uh, if someone said, "I'm not going to yell at you," but I'm also like, "I'm not going to be happy about that." But like, what it, you just want to you want to be forgiven? I mean, wow. what if they said, "Here's, you know what? I was paid a hundred bucks. Here's ten bucks." Oh, I thought you said they gave me the full hundred. The full I hundred. I would take that in a second. <laughs> I I asked a comedian the other day. We had had a conversation in a green room, and he kind of started the conversation. But we were riffing on something. Yeah. And I've asked him about this bit for a while. I was like, "Hey, is that bit working? I love that bit so much." And it was just a premise. And then six months later, he kept saying it. He's like, "It doesn't work. It doesn't work." And I wrote him. And I didn't know if this was weird, but I said, like, you asked hey, for the premise? I'd love to, like, work on that premise. It fits into this chunk. Would you be cool with it? Happy to take you out to dinner. And he said, he said, yeah. Was this someone who you would want to have dinner with anyway? I don't know them that well. They're on the other coast. Okay. So you're never going to have that dinner. No, if this, if this, this you're going to steal the joke and never have that dinner. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you'll feel good about it because you offered up a fake dinner, right? Yeah. Which you're like, oh man, I got hey, I got yeah, meetings. We'll when you do go out there, I got meetings, man. And... <laughs> I'm gonna make this dinner happen now. Believe you me. So he yeah. was cool about it, or they were cool about he, it? Yeah, he was. He was, cool he was super cool about it. I, I just because I, I kept asking. I just it was such a funny idea, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, go for it." You know, what you could have done. You could have helped him make it better, and then given him his joke, or their joke, or her joke. And then, like, ask for money in return? No, just being, like, a decent person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It, I guess uh, that's another option. But that's nice. And you did ask. I'm, I mean, and also, if you write up the whole joke, then they might not want to do it. I can't write for other... It's right. hard to write. For, I, I don't think... When I see people write for, like, other people, I don't think I have that skill. Yeah. Have you written for a lot of other people, like, award show stuff? I've done, a, I've stuff? done a VMAs a lot, the video music. I did, I did that, like, six times. Is that, do you like that kind of work? I like that because it was, first of all, you, you, a lot of work, and maybe I got one thing on. Like, they yeah. just, they, they, they would be like, all right, Mira Sorvino and Kid Rock are going to present an award. We need some banter for them. And they're like, oh, Mira Sorvino, we're, we're switching her around. So you'd write like 10,000, you'd write like 30 bits for Kid Rock and Mira Sorvino. Like, yeah, she's, she's going to do something with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, she wants to be by herself or something. But the fun part of that, <coughs> the fun part of that job was, they would let you go talk to the celebrity who you wrote for. Uh huh. So I had, I, uh, well, I can, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not a big story, but like one time I, like I met Usher and uh, Beck, and when when I met Beck, his assistant, uh, who I'm hoping is not his assistant anymore, and also he's he ain't listening. <laughs> Beck is actually one of the like I, uh, I I they said you know this this writer is going to come talk to Beck I guess they someone told him so I went over there and he was really nice uh -huh. and she and his assistant was like oh are you the little writer guy <laughs> I was, I was fucking are you seriously As talking a, to me that way an assistant yeah too. and he's an assistant yeah and the guy who you're an assistant to is perfectly nice to me yeah but uh <clears throat> Another story, I, I presented something that I didn't write, but they just said, can you go show this thing that's, for whatever reason, uh, they had me to Lenny Kravitz and Giselle. And uh, I showed it to him, and she's like, this makes him look stupid and me stupider. Sorry to do a voice, an accent. <laughs> <laughs> just coloring the story a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I don't, you don't have to do it. I don't, Because a lot of people didn't want to, they didn't want something written for them. Yeah, and I was like, "That's better. You're probably that's great that you yeah. have something written for it." 
Did it feel like, like, wow, I did all this work and none of it mattered? Well, I mean, it'd be, it's not going to matter regardless. If they sure. used everything I wrote. It wouldn't be like, oh, that's a really important thing I did. <laughs> was there any, any VMA? You said VMAs? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Any VMA joke you remember? You were like, yeah, that was a good joke that you wrote. I remember I, were, I wrote a long one for Robert De Niro, and they're just like, he's not going to want to do this. It's too long or something <laughs> like that. And it was kind of good, but they, they don't give him something that that's involved. Like, mm. I was like, all right. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think who else I met. But, yeah, it was kind of fun. Oh, I met Hanson. I remember the, wow. Yeah, oh, I remember. Wow. I presented that with something, and they're the really nice, really nice. Yeah, everyone was pretty nice. Everyone was nice, actually. I can't imagine being mean to the writer. Who's yeah, I mean, you shouldn't you be mean stuff. to anyone, but I mean, but, but no, I can li- see being mean to other people. That, but l- that little writer guy thing—that's just—I <laughs> that's don't know what that person's doing there. Hopefully, yeah. um, uh, oh God, oh, I was, so I wanted to talk about you know, with crowd work, yeah, which you know is a big part of people know you for your crowd work. Well, I did a crowd work special, but I did it like twenty-seven years into my career. So, when you first started stand up, was crowd work at, like? Was it just something that was done? Did people do crowd work tours? <laughs> no, they didn't. Not that I know of. I mean, there were people. There was always people like you know Paula Poundstone, who, you know Paula Poundstone, mm-hmm. who always did a lot of crowd work. And there was just there were certain comics who were like, oh, that's they do crowd work, a lot of crowd work. And I was never one of them, and I'm still not one of them. <laughs> I mean, that's not true though. It is true. I mean, I never. You see me at the cellar. I never do crowd work. Oh, sure, but I think we talked about it with someone who does a lot of crowd work. Is very much in love with it now that I think showcase shows are, I think doing crowd work on showcase shows are, are it's obnoxious. I, I mean, I don't want to comment, but I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I just did comment. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's a waste. I mean, I've had this conversation with uh, younger comics. Sometimes I'll do like a bar show and there'll be a younger comic. And I don't want to be like walking up just going, Hey, I'm an established comic. You need my advice on something. But there is sometimes when we're just like, do you mind if I just give you a thought or something like that? Mm-hmm. But I've talked to people because they, they'll, they'll be on stage. Do you do a lot of crowd work? On the road? Uh, not a lot, by no means. I have things I want to test yeah. out. But, yeah, because you'll see these these bar shows and like, the audience sitting there and they're fine, they're listening, and then it's... They, so and then they just go around. We got There's this myth, I think. Then I don't know all comics are going to agree with that. You you need to do it at the beginning of a show, and uh-huh. this is not true. I mean, if you go to San Francisco, you go to Punchline. They don't. MC doesn't start asking for birthdays and shit like that. Sure. I know. I just. I don't know. I've. I. I remember when I first started like headlining around the road, being surprised how little crowd work hosts would do up top compared to New York. Yeah. Yeah. It depends how cold they are. I like a, I think a little bit, but you have if you don't get into jokes for at least five minutes before you start bringing up comedians, then I'm annoyed. Yeah, because it's it it kind of. I mean, some. T- I'll, I mean, you can follow anyone. I can follow some act that I think I'm not going to follow, and you know, it, you know the way it is. Different nights, it's different, but yeah, I feel like it. It, it also welcomes them in in a way that I don't want them welcomed in. Interesting. It makes not them like too I intimate. Look, well, I just if you, if you kind of it's kind of hard to say don't yell stuff out when you're when, you, when you're addressing every fucking person. I don't know. I just feel like this should be this boundary, not like some rigid thing. And I also do some crowd work on the road, especially. But yeah, so maybe I'm I'm not a hypocrite because I don't do it. <laughs> I don't do it if someone has to follow me. I'm not going to just do it. Sure. And also, I think like the thing I I was going to say, I know I'm bouncing, but like I'd see hosts at certain clubs, like newer comics, and they're doing, they've got four four hosting things over the weekend, and you're just like, you should be working on your act. Mm -hmm. Don't be like this fucking birthday shit. Like, if you want to do a couple of minutes of it because you think you should, then do it, but you're wasting. Is this too serious? No, no, no. No, No, we took, you know, it's. it's just an interesting time, at least like kind of my generation of comics and younger. It's like, I don't know where this clip thing started. Go ahead. Well, it's the clip thing. It's well, why the did clip it suddenly thing. become... I because didn't... we, if it feels like we have to put out a lot of content to get a following and the following to get clubs to book us. Uh, and 
the, we can't we can only burn so much material or, or right, we, right you know i mean it no, i understand really like it's a thing it's like you could have like five moments where you think oh this is clip worthy yeah and, and then you have five clips but so that's why i mean it's it, i do it on the road enough to get one or two for the next week uh, uh oh, so you, you bombard people with that shit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much, though. But it fucking, it's, it's, it works. Does it work? Does yeah, it work I mean, for you, everyone? You could turn your crowd work shit into a, a trillion I reels. actually, I tried posting one on a reel and it flagged it. What did, what did it, you like say? Copyright. Was this right? Because of, oh, because. Sure. That happens. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not like anti crowd work and I did do a crowd work special, but I also did that because I, because I'd had like already, I think established myself as a joke guy. So, why well, we did want to bring up the crowd work special because one thing sometimes people talk to me they they, they see a crowd work clip and they're very curious like what happened to that person, where oh. did they go, and yeah, uh, I don't keep in touch with people. Well, either. fortunately, we did, Todd. We kept in touch with two people from from your crowd work special. Seriously, and I'd love to play. They they have messages for you that we'd love to play on the downside. Are they? Is it going to make me angry? I don't think so. If it does, we'll cut it out. Okay. Are they mean? Are they mean? No, they're not mean. But I guess now I'm curious. Do you mind if I play a a, a segment from your crowd work special to set up the clip? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I've I didn't know this, this is an ambush podcast. <laughs> 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 All right. What do you do, Daryl? I'm an actor. Seriously. Have you been in any movies? Yeah. Let's oh. hear them. Um. Uh, what was the one with the? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You got any auditions coming up, Tara? I have one tomorrow. What's actually. your audition for? Uh, it's called June in January. What is that? Yeah, well, it's, a, I think, a Lifetime movie of the week. Lead character named June. Uh -huh. is going to get married in January. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff writes itself. <laughs> is that really what it's about? That's, That's the really best. what it's about. No kidding. That is the best thing I've heard in a long time. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, that guy. I don't think he. Yeah, he was good. I liked him. Yeah. How many? How many shows did you film to put that special together? Seven. That was in Vancouver. That one. Yeah, that guy. He's he faves my stuff and writes to me once in a while. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's he was a good sport and sort of was. Is he mad at me? How so did, we wanted to see where he was at now. How did you? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. How did you get a hold of him? Is, is this going to be a? Gonna... Hey, Todd, Daryl Shuttleworth. Remember me? Crowd work tour? The one who made your show actually enjoyable in Vancouver? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, your little uh, inclusion of me in your show jinxed me. I haven't worked since. I'm not kidding. I'm now, those boxes, that's what I do for a living. I move people. I'm sitting here surrounded by boxes because you decided to include me in your special. Screwed everything up. I'm living in a truck. You can go to hell, you and your cat. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm not. So that acting career. How did you track him down? <laughs> I had had fast by, by, by producer, Paige. I have my ways. No, seriously, how did you get the people's <laughs> names? Actually, if you look at your IMDb page for the, the Crowdwork special, he's credited. Oh, he, he put his name yeah. in. Oh, <laughs> of course he put his name in. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Was it hard to find? He's been fine. going by a Netflix credit for the last. He looks way different, but I guess that beard. But yeah, he was. Uh, I enjoyed talking to what him. Year was he was, was, what year was that? What? 2013. 2013. Okay. But yeah, I enjoyed talking to that guy because he was he was kind of like he he got it. Yeah. Were there any cities where sometimes do you feel like with your crowd work tour the people who come out. They know how to be good crowd work people. Yeah, I mean, when I've done the tours, they like some people go, "Does it get rowdy?" And it's like, no, it's the opposite. Like, it's also they would, some of them, some of them sit up front and don't want to talk. Sure. And I always move on because I, I just don't want to make someone uncomfortable. I get Even yeah. I there's definitely a, in the past. <laughs> there's there seems to feel, and this is what I think the clips have done to a degree, where there's a new genre where they lie and they go and they don't even hold on to the lie. So they'll go like, who's this? My sister, uh, different moms. Yeah. I cut someone out of one of the shows cause they, I found out they lied to me. How'd you find out? I think they told me. 
like, oh, <laughs> like maybe I was after the show they told me or something. And, you know, and you said, like, like, I gotta have some integrity with yeah, this crowd. Yeah, I just, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it just bummed me out. Yeah, it's definitely a bummer. I, you, you want just, you just want people to just be normal, just answer f- fully, regular. But some, some, especially men, some men really want to be funny. And yeah. it's brutal. Yeah. You're looking at me when you said that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have one more. It stresses me out. I'm sc- this is making me nervous. <laughs> me too. Uh, this is the crowd. This is the this is the clip. You get paid to tweet. I literally. Oh, this get guy's paid a nice guy. I know. That is Garrett. His name's Garrett. Job. Think, no, it was Garth. Garth. That's right. How long have you been doing that job? Uh, two years. Fun. Uh, I'm actually about to quit. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Are you, why are you quitting? Uh, the days are getting too long, and, uh... <laughs> wow, they're really laughing at you for that. <laughs> Look, they're swaying in their seats. They're just like, oh, my God. Did he just, the guy who tweets for a living, said, talking about <laughs> the long, hard days? Or, <laughs> oh, my God. All right, this is where we'll see how Garth is doing now. Oh, he looks just like... <laughs> hey, Todd. Garth Burkett here. AKA the cucumber soda guy you talked with in Seattle on your first crowd work tour. Gotta say, ever since we chatted on your special, my life has never been the same. Uh, Not only did I get that sweet little 15 minutes of cucumber soda fame, uh, I quit that tweeting job, uh, got one with a little more work-life balance, focused on stand-up a little bit more, and eventually moved to New York. Uh, And after a couple years of perseverance and hustle, I finally fulfilled my dream of becoming an underemployed graphic designer in Portland. But before I left New York, I made sure to catch the taping of your second crowd work tour, Spicy Honey. And uh, it was very inconspicuous though. They only seated me directly in the front row. But uh, yeah, Todd, you've always been an inspiration to me ever since I was 11 and saw your Comedy Central Presents, which I feel is probably good to hear. And um, I followed in your footsteps so much so that I've lost all my hair. (laughs) So uh, thanks for the jokes and um, Hope to see you around soon. Bye. That one's nice. Yeah, he's he's come to my shows several times. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I re- I guess in Portland or whatever. But yeah, he's a nice guy. They're uh, both nice guys, from what I can tell. Yeah, we didn't we didn't play the videos from the mean ones. Um, <laughs> how, uh, how, how, how did you find him? Did you track down those two? Those just, those how did okay. you find? Was his name an IMDb also? No, it was just a matter of like um, Garth Dry Soda. Oh really? Came up. Wow. Wow. You probably gave wow. it a bump. You gave the, the company. Yeah. Well, he sent me some soda also, some dry soda. How was the soda? It was good. It was just like, you know, it's, it was not like a, it's like, it's kind of like LaCroix, actually. Sure. Flavored, fla- uh, flavored water. Kind of. Was the cucumber as bad? Cucumber, I just, I, it's not something I'm going to like. Okay. To me, cucumber is water already. That's my biggest complaint about cucumbers. It's, it's already too watery. I just feel like, you know, when you go to like a restaurant, they have pour your cucumber water. Like that should be your default water. Yeah. Sure. I like a water with a bunch of fruit in it. Do you? Yeah, I like do. Like an infusion, huh? Yeah, but I, if I go to a hotel and big thing of ice with oranges and shit, I'm like, all right, good hotel. A hotel with a big thing of ice and oranges. They have, I'm saying like their water. Oh, tank. yeah, yeah. But I always, I always think that water's been sitting there a while. Uh, days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm at a I'm at a, a Marriott. What am I going to do? Oh, I got to lower my standards. No way you've, ever, you've never stayed in a Marriott. There's no way you've ever stayed. In a Marriott. <laughs> do you have Marriott rewards? Of course, I have Marriott okay. rewards. Let's get back on that subject. I, what what I think I upgraded to gold, which means I can maybe check out at 2 p.m. sometimes. So, who do you think started the crowd work clip thing? Is it is there someone who's credited it? I think people like Andrew Schultz are credited as like making a boom on YouTube. But then TikTok, it was just the algorithm. Just people love it for some reason. Yeah, I'm not a. I don't care to watch it unless it's you. Yeah, but like clips, clips you don't get. I don't know. It's it's a TikTok isn't my app. I'm a Twitter guy. Really? You're a Twitter guy. I, I'm I'm on TikTok, but I I I can't get it. I mean, I have like thirteen thousand followers, fourteen thousand, but I can't get like. I don't get these videos where like eight million people view. It. Well, but you could chop up. I guess it's the copyright problem. Yeah. But TikTok doesn't have the copyright thing. Find the apps that don't have the copyright I, shit and I, cut it up into a million pieces. I think with the clips thing, with what maybe is taken off, what why it maybe intrigues people is they feel like they're seeing a special moment that's not in. Yeah, I mean that, like that, a show. They think they're seeing like 
whoa, look at this impromptu thing. You know, rather than like, oh, I'm watching an act. There's something about it. Me- mentally, sure. People think that they're, that's why it's special, you know? Yeah. But now it's, it's gotten to a place where if it started with genuine special moments, it's gotten to a place where you, some of these interactions, you're like, this is not, you know, yeah, that's, it's nothing. It's, it seems like why do it unless it's a really special. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's, but that's, that's the problem is now everyone's like, now I got to have one for the it, week. And they're trying to and also, do an act with that in mind. Yeah. Being like, I got to have this right, moment. Right. You know? Uh, it's also Steve Hofstetter, I, I think is probably him with the heckler stuff. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately yeah. led, I mean, a lot of these clips are hecklery interactions. Yeah. But I'm not good. I'm not good with like mean hecklers. You know what happened the, here? I do. So I'm doing uh, Magoobies. Uh huh. Don't laugh. I'm not laughing. And I talk about COVID at some point. I say COVID, and someone in the front row you goes, uh, China flu. Ugh. And it's that moment where, and this happened, we talked about it. Uh, oh, we, you know, we didn't talk about this, where I did. Um, some joke at a comedy zone in in North Carolina, and it was a. It started about Brittany Griner being released from Russia, and it's a. It's like, it's it's a dark joke. I'm not. I don't, I don't go on stage like moralizing, mm-hmm. but I said, you know, Brittany Griner was released from uh, Russian prison, and someone in the back went boo, and I did like the worst thing I could do, where I was like, um. I think it's good when Americans get freed from foreign prisons. Like, I think that's funny. <laughs> that's I think that's funny because what can they? How can they respond back? He came up to me after the show, and and so at some point I said like, you know, probably called him an asshole. It wasn't good, but he came up after and he said, you know, I'm helping. You I was out. just joking, and then he left, oh. and this was after the show. But it it put a damper in the show, yeah, for sure. Um. But, with, you know, when someone says it in the front row, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to chastise this, make it a learning moment? I didn't have a comeback. I haven't thought about COVID in a long time, so I didn't have a good thing. And I just don't know what my role is. And also, you got to just, I mean, I I used to get madder than I do on, now on stage. Like, now I try to mm, uh-huh. bottle it up. And But I also, as you do this, you'll do, once you're on stage, like, for your 10th time on stage, you'll feel, learn this. But... <laughs> No, you also, I mean, you cultivate, if, if I go do headlining, I mean, the people who come to see me are pretty nice, actually. They're mm-hmm. pretty thoughtful and not shitheads. And if you or act like a shithead, you're going to really stand out. And sure. It's not going to be like, they're not going to have like 10 other shitheads who are like, yeah. 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 But if you do a comedy club and it's more like they're not there to see you, then you, you face that risk a little more. One other thing that happened at Magoobies, it was an eventful weekend. I had, uh, I looked over, show was going well, and this woman was just lying on the floor. Oh. Flat out. I feel like someone else told me a story about someone passing out. Was she drunk or just tired? Well, that, that's a big question, but I didn't see her for a little bit, and her, her friends later revealed that they had tried, that this was their friend, who I guess they claim always has migraines. So apparently it was a migraine. But they were basically, they had started positioning the chairs because they were trying to hide her from me oh. on stage so I wouldn't know this. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> Sweet. And I, yeah, I think they, they, maybe she just, in their mind, she just needed to lie down. Nothing else needed to be done. And they were trying to hide her. But then I saw her and I thought about that concert in, in, in Texas where 10 people died Astro and people World. criticized, what was it? Astro World. Astro World. And people were criticizing the singer for not like going like, hey, people are getting crushed. And I thought in my moment, like, this is my moment, 30 people at Magoobies. So I, I stopped the show. I said, are you okay? No, you did the right. I, I've done that before. Yeah. I yeah. People, I know someone pass out in a Seattle show and you're just kind of like, I'm not going to like barrel through my act yeah. looking at someone on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but what a way to go for that person. If, you know, know, if this is the end. If dying, it's, it seemed like a great comedian, then dying would be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they came in. And I was talking about me, not you. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> they, they ushered her out and it was a weird, th- it took a while. It took a while for her to stand up and leave. And I'm on stage and I'm like, I don't know when to make like a joke about it. Yeah, and then thankfully they told me about the chairs, and and I said, you know, that's the U.S. healthcare system, blah blah blah, and it was fine, but it put a damper in the show. It put a damper in the show for sure. Yeah. Anyone ever die at a show of yours? Uh, die? No, I don't think. No, no, 
Sure. <laughs> Die laughing, hell yeah. <laughs> um, I did a sh- I did a play once, and a w- woman died at the um, before it started, so before they sat down in the audience. Like but at they, their home, lucky her. Like, <laughs> like at their apartment, they died. <laughs> <laughs> no, like in the like in the, ho- in the hospital. So it was died. one of those <laughs> dinner dinner in a theater kind of thing. Yeah. So it was at dinner. It was like in the lobby area of the theater. I love that you didn't call that dinner theater. Uh, dinner and a theater. <laughs> dinner and to, a theater. Trying to experience. separate it. Trying to make it doesn't sound. <laughs> oh, it sounds a little thing. higher class. Yeah, it wasn't dinner, dinner and theater. a theater. You know, um, no. I work at a strip and a club. Well, let's let's move on to. Our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Now you said you didn't prepare at all, so so I don't. didn't. That's preparing's got to stop. Yeah, there, sh- there you okay. go. Yeah, okay, Russell. Yeah, how, how could you do less at this point? <laughs> uh, so, well, I'll start with one, and if anything pops in your head as we talk, uh, this is anything that needs to stop. Specific, grand. For me, I I talked to someone recently, and they said uh, I was trying to make plans for for I want to get a. Uh, this is new, my beard, mm-hmm. and uh, I wanted to get uh, some ha- a headshot, okay, with the beard, so people know. Yeah, you got to let people, people know that you got a beard. And he said, uh, "We're on the phone talking," and he said, "Let me get back to you when I'm in front of my calendar." And I've worked with this person before, and there's a lot of like, "Well, I I, I can't know until I get home and get in front of my calendar." Enough with the paper. With a calendar that doesn't exist in the cloud, <laughs> you don't know. What do you mean? He might have a like a calendar yeah, like with his like well, that he writes stuff down on. No, no, I no, you're no, saying, no. You're I think he does. And no, I think he does, and it's time to stop. Get in front of my calendar. Let let me call you back when I can get the electricity to to read the the piece of paper. What do you? It's paper calendars that you have to wait until you get home that night to consult. I don't understand. It's one of those things where I'm sure they're like, oh, it's less stressful. I like to look at my week. I like to look at my month. I like to look at my day. And I go, that's great. Move to an Amish society. Because you are forcing everyone around you, everyone around you to to, to, uh, uh, inconvenience themselves to help you. You're forcing this person to have everything at their fingertips right away. Like you're also forcing- They're the photographer? What? Was this the photographer? Yes. And a photographer. Let's also add this to the equation. We're not yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. my it's grandma. A business thing. Yeah. Right. When do you want to get lunch? Yeah. Photographer. Okay. So I, I don't think he listens, but he could. And you need to get a digital calendar. It's, it's like someone who, here's when people, when I call people and their voicemail box is full, you lose your phone for a month <laughs> legally. <laughs> because once again, Maybe you're like, I don't like listening to voicemails. Too fucking bad. This is part of the societal agreement that sometimes someone needs to leave a message. And instead, I have to call you again because you don't like voicemail. <laughs> that's got to stop. It does. I like that that's your... That it's your, it's got to stop. This one thing this one guy did once. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's got to stop. Society. I've heard the phrase calendar. Let me get in front of my calendar. If you ever said that to me because we're close, I'd mm-hmm. smack you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm good about calendars and emails. You've been getting better. Yeah. See? You've been getting better. Yeah. I. Uh, anything's got to stop, Tom? Uh, I was hoping this taping would stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I uh, I got. I keep going. I'll I'll chime in. Sure, sure. What do you got, Russell? You got you got something. I I. I'll think as you're. I don't, you're, I don't have uh, one for. You complained. You complained about something the other day on what Twitter. What was it? You saw someone that used Russell's. This has got to stop. Oh yes. Oh okay. So I'm all, I'm all for for new words and new things and we're a society. We're we're moving. We're changing things. But I saw someone say that. What a way to minimize civil rights. The way you just. No no no. no. I'm mumbled it off. Like, I'm saying like I hate when people complain about like words changing. You know like who the fuck cares? But this specific word was used and i don't know if it's a real thing where lots of people are using it it could be again i've seen it just I, a one time use thing but i saw the um i've heard of unalived for suicide or things like that or or there might be a different term but uh-huh. this person used it in a way that their cousin murdered someone and they're like we are fortunately getting reports that are my cousin unalived his wife and um you know they're searching for blah blah, blah. and i was like you can't gussy up 
murder like it, 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 it murder i've never is, heard that on a lot murder yeah. murder like it, the, i think first suicide or people are trying to move away from saying kill yourself or, or they killed themselves or something so unalived is is a term but i was like that i can see how that makes sense in my head for suicide but for saying it to doing it to someone else they unalived someone i was like no that's murder and like we don't need a nicer word for murder it's murder, you know. And ultimately, like it should feel bad. bad. It's important. Yeah, it's a bad thing that you feel something when you hear someone murdered someone. Yeah. Else. But if suicide just means unalived, what's what's changed? Yeah. Unalived just sounds so weird. <laughs> yeah, it does. And well, it's also so it weird. immediately conjures up oh they killed themselves. Yeah, uh, for sure. I I'm, I'm I think it's, I don't mean to be an edge lord comic, but yeah. I don't, <laughs> but uh, I don't get that one. Yeah. I think it's probably that they've heard the word so many times misused or used poorly or used as a negative. Like suicide, certainly people have talked about it as a negative. And we've and and so there's a degree of like, well, let's make this not as taboo a topic matter, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's just but then someday people will be like, unalive yourself, bitch. And then people will go like, you know what? That's a mean unalive is mean. Yeah. And it's like, no. You got to have a way to tell people. There's an to, awkwardness to unalived. It doesn't really. That's my my thing with, with new words is sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like this one's going to catch. Yeah. Where where you're like, let's have a marketing meeting about this word. And unalived is one. Yeah. When you make words longer, it, it can be tough for good luck. Yeah. I hope it works out. How do you feel about coffee shop seating where... <laughs> They, this is something I may have talked about this on other podcasts, maybe not, but the, I'm, this has got to stop what I'm about to say. (laughs) I like a nice, I don't like when someone comes into a coffee shop, plops their shit down on a table and gets a table and you're ahead of them and you didn't bother to do that. So they get a table and they were there after you. Yeah, you probably do this. I can see by the way you're looking. Mm-hmm, you yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I agree. Mm-hmm. That's that is. It's that's cutthroat. Not, it's not. You have to be have the stuff. You have to like. You have to have waited in line, got the coffee, and then you. Okay, sit down. so you have a big backpack you've been carrying around. Your back hurts. You're getting older. Put it on the floor. You're worried about where your life Put it on is. On the floor going. next to you while you're in line. So you're you're saying the backpack you've is all right to carry up to the point of. The 30 seconds it takes to order a coffee. Who knows how long? Maybe the line's a little long. Put your fucking backpack down on the floor. Exactly, Russell. Yeah. How do you know that? But maybe you don't want a table. Why? If you wanted a table so bad, why didn't you leave something there? Because I don't want to be, I don't want to do that. I probably have done it. I'll, the only time I've done it is if there's someone ahead of me and I'm like, I bet they don't want a table because everyone's ordering takeout. But if they, I'm ready to give up the table. But generally, it's a, I, don't like to, I don't like that that exists. Mm-hmm. Okay. Listen, I don't have to agree with it. This has got to stop. But I, it seems it's a, a code cut, of honor. Yeah, it's, cu- it's a little cutthroat. Yeah, this has got to stop. Yeah, if you don't want cutthroat. Go back to Fort Lauderdale, New York. This is the cutthroat city. You don't sit in a chair. Someone's taking that chair. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Uh, let's go on to our final segment. You better count your blessings. <laughs> your blessing oh i forgot to mention that uh the only other thing we had was it your favorite walgreens oh yeah you know it closed yeah no i oh. had like 30 messages from people mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. but uh did not... you get back to each one going like thank did, you for hey, calling I heard, hey i heard thank you <laughs> hey i heard thank you so much my condolences <laughs> thank you so much thank you hey you know i did a show once i think it was in austin and a guy before me, this is when I was doing that joke, did a different joke about that exact Walgreens. Mm. And I was like, you know, because you, you always, I always say when, you know, someone burned a premise that I wanted. Sure. Or when oftentimes you could still do it. But I was like, I had to find it. I was like, I'm going to still do my fucking Walgreens, Chicago. And I did it, but it's just weird that it was like, of all things that you're doing before me. He wasn't stealing a joke. I mean, he did, sure. He, did, he, no. just, he just came up with a different yeah. joke. That's all. I open or sometimes they'll ask preemptively. They'll be like, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? And I always said to myself, I will never ask that unless I was taping something. I don't want to be like, don't. I hear stories of people being like, 
don't talk about relationships. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? I only do that if I'm doing like a long chunk on something. Sure. And then I'll be like, if you don't mind, can you not? But you could, do, or I'll say, do you have any jokes about this? And then they go, no. And then, okay, we're good. Uh-huh. But I don't, I, yeah, I don't think there's some things you can't talk about, but. But I could see you being like, you know, that Walgreens and with the. Vol- and I also say no crowd work. Mm, I've been thinking about wanting to ask features that. I don't mind if the host does it, but features, sometimes I know some features that go into crazy crowd work. And if I'm headlining, I don't like it. Yeah. You, how do you ask? Do you say, do you go like, hey. I just, when I book the show, I go. um, Sure. I say, uh, I need someone. And it's the only rule is that there's no jokes about this one topic. And then uh, no crowd work. I'm going to start doing that. I need more rules. You don't have the. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> you're still eight years in. Yeah. You're still yeah. like you yeah. take what you can get. Yeah, you can't. Be, Who do you think you are? You can't sell where you. You're not going to pick the hotel. You're not going to pick how much money you make. You're just going to be happy that you get up. Yeah. There. Then you earn the right to be picky. Um, uh, Russell, do you have a blessing? Yeah, it's really simple. I, um, you know, I do my own cold brew at home, and some <laughs> days it's good, some days it's bad. It was really good today. Wow, it was really good. What exactly happens blessing. when it's bad? Like what? It's what just wrong? not as. It's like it, it, the coloring. You can tell with the coloring, like when it's too light, uh, it's it's not as good. If it's too dark, it's too much. It was a good, perfect. Oh, Are you um, measuring this or just going by feel? Well, I you know I get the the grounds from my local thing, and I you know I have like a, it's like a tube. It drips down. How slowly. many glasses do you drink a day? Uh, just one big one. Um, but that's it. Cold brew, man. I bought. Yeah. I had some the other day, and it was just like I was ready to like kill people. No, no, no. I do one. <laughs> I do one. One a day. But um, but you know, I I do it, and then I put it. It's usually it lasts for for a couple days. Um, uh, and then do a new one. So you don't go out for coffee. Well, try not to. But I do sometimes. But I do as often. almost every single day. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what's your What's your base? Starbucks, Dunkin'. No, 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 no. I'm a I'm an I'm an indie coffee. I mean, some smaller chains, like yeah. like Think or La Colombe. Mm-hmm. But gen- I almost never go to Starbucks unless it's the absolute. Not th- I hope I'm not going to put them out of business. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> He's got to stop Starbucks. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, occasionally I'll have Dunkin' Donuts coffee. But it's, that's only if it's like it's right there and I'm, I'm not going to go. But I love looking for the, the indie third wave sh- coffee shops all over the road. Yeah? Yeah. What do you like about them? I just, I don't know. I just feel at home there. I just feel like that's just like, and I, I honestly probably don't know the difference in the coffee. Like I'm not really, I don't ever really find pal- refined palate, but I do know I don't like those fruity coffees. Mm. Mm. I agree. I like vanilla coffee recently. Oh my God. Not, no. not, 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 not pump, not pump. Oh, well, the like bean, re- something in the bean. Trader Joe's is good vanilla. Really? Yeah. And it, because of the whole 30, I've been drinking it black. Yeah, I'm trying been, to get to black. I made that switch not years ago. I figured like this. Will, I when people order those milkshake type, it, it, yeah. it just get black. Coffee. I feel like coffee is an opportunity to have something that has basically no calories and yeah. gives you a lot of pleasure. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's flavorful. It's flavorful. It's a little bitter, but I'm getting used to it. That's why I like the vanilla. It's like a little just eases me in there. But what I also like is the problem with adding milk is then it's not hot enough. I want my coffee to be hot. Yeah, I'm micro. If oh, I'm, I'm at a, home, I'm, a I'm microwaving cold. it. Cold. You're cold. cold. Yeah. Um, uh, Todd, do you have a blessing? Um, trying to think. I found these really good cat treats at Trader Joe's, and my cat's really like it. Russell has a cat? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. How old's your cat? She's you're like four ish. Oh, okay. Cool. How old's yours? Oh, my God. Eight, I guess. Yeah. Eight. Wow. And the, yeah, 2000. Oh, my God. Nine almost. Wow. Is that, does that mean almost done? How long does two cats live? <laughs> Come on, they man. can live like they can live like twenty years. I've, yeah. I had a cat that lived to twenty two when I was growing up. Wow, twenty two. Yeah, well, that's old. Yeah, that's kind of unusually yeah. old. Yeah. Have you had a cat that's died? Yeah, when I was a, a, a young person. I remember when my cat died when I was a kid. The cat like disappeared. Some cats, if I'm correct, they go. They know they're about to die, so they kind of like go away. Yeah, I've heard that. Place. Or they'll yeah. hide under the bed or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe my parents just said that so I didn't see the body or whatever. I uh I see people on TikTok post like about like this is my last day with my cat and oh. I fuck I'm sitting there crying in my fucking apartment. Oh. I mean I've never cried. <laughs> But it's a, it's a bummer. But thanks for bringing up dead cats. Yeah. <laughs> dead cats. After I just told you about my cat. Yeah. <laughs> my cat. This is how I oh do. 
Yeah. Um, uh, my blessing, Paige got me a wonderful Christmas gift. It was so this is how perfect it is. So it was a it was a, a fancy bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. With some kind of backstory. Oh yeah, I saw that. But picture. there was a there was a picture of it of me as a Dragon Ball Z character. I don't know if you know what Dragon Ball Z is. I don't. It's an anime. Oh, it, man, uh, I, don't, I don't need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very cool <laughs> rendition of me, uh, uh, in very good shape as an anime character. And then four wine glasses, because we don't have any. Tova and I don't have any. And they were uh, the orange and blue of Dragon Ball Z, but like light enough in a way where Tova's okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Because Tova... What, say that everything you just said. Say it all again. <laughs> <laughs> so like the colors of the show, yeah, uh, like the outfits or whatever, it's like a kind of an orange and a blue. Oh, okay. And so so the glasses have a blue and an orange oh, tint. Oh, they're like, they're like nerd wine glasses? No, no, no. But it, in a tasteful way. Like they look, they're very fancy. They look cool. Which is good because if they were... Nerd glasses. I just don't think of here. anime fans drinking wine. I feel like they're drinking like <laughs> grape soda or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. The Dragon Ball Z stores all out of wine glasses. <laughs> they're all plastic. And, <laughs> um, but uh, it was a very nice. That's nice, a nice gift. Yeah. What'd you get her? Nice. It was a, a, a very a, generous bonus. A oh. very generous bonus. <laughs> but th- oh, okay. Which, which again, there was a part of me that's like, well, that's technically not, not a gift. That's like a work thing. You should pay her like a dollar for every email she sends to get guests. I can't afford that, Todd. You would have cost $300 <laughs> alone. No, that's, that's the joke I was making. Oh. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Fine, and he, fine, and it's like, fine. It's like, Todd, you live next door. <laughs> We've never had a guest closer to the studio in our entire no, no. lives. Don't reveal where I live. Yeah. <laughs> People scouring a radius of this. Um, okay, so... Uh, this is coming out. Uh, I wrote it down here. Where the fuck did it go? Oh, January 31st. Is there uh, anything you'd like to plug? I, I have like no tour dates booked for this year except for one in January 22nd. You did a big tour. I mean, I did a bunch of tour dates, yeah. Do you consider it like I call everything a tour because it like do you does it mean something to you? Yeah, I mean, I try to give the tours a name and this one was like, you know, because of the pandemic it was like 2020 stadium tour then it became the 2021 or what. I'm getting the years confused. Now we're into the 2023s. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I, I really, I, I don't have any, I need, I'm, a bunch of stuff is getting booked. Good. Allegedly. Allegedly. But I have, well, let's see what we can plug. You can get, you can watch my crowd work special that they were talking about mm-hmm. on Amazon prime. I have a special called spicy honey on uh, Netflix. Uh, I have a book that I wrote. I, I own the book. You own the book. I'll sign that for you. For twenty dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, blah 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 blah. And what's your handle on that? Todd Barry, nice clean. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I was so that was the count of my blessings when I was able to get Todd Barry on TikTok. That was huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russell, what do you want to plug? Uh, January thirty first. Um, I don't. We don't have any uncle function. I would just uh, Titanic, Daryl Roth Theater, eight shows a week. Come see me in that. Uh, I will be headlining in Bethlehem on February 4th. That's Steel Stacks. Oh, I've done that. That's good. Yeah? Yeah. And then I'll be at the uh, Comedy Zone Charlotte, February 8th, Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I'll be in Asheville, North Carolina, February 9th. Where in Asheville? Uh, it's it's a, a random room. It's a cool city. Yeah. I did a festival there once. Okay. The Laugh Your Asheville Festival. I did festival. that once also, yeah. That was the first time I ever performed for like 500 people. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird that you perform for more people than I did. <laughs> <laughs> you you vacillate between self deprecation and then self aggrandizement. Yeah, <laughs> you you were correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be at the Blue Ridge Comedy Club, uh, in fuck Bristol, Tennessee, huh. February tenth and eleventh. What's that like? I wonder. I don't know. It's it's new, small, chill vibe. Oh, small and chill. I like. I love playing the South, man. Really, I love it. I. It depends. So I've I've mentioned like uh, before. I I say I'm Jewish on stage once in a while. Yeah. And someone in the audience, three different shows in the South, they go, "Ugh, really loud." Yeah, that's because you're playing to random people. Mm, Sure. I get more Jews now. Believe you me. Frankly, part of me is like, I think I'm. 
building by no by no choice just a big Jewish fan base. You should yeah build that base, then they show up, and you don't have to worry about that happening. Yeah, but that's sure. another ten years that's going to take. Sh- sure, <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing the work. You got a booking agent. Ah uh, yeah, All Matt right. Bourne at Innovative. You don't need to say the name. name. <laughs> 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 I think I think they listen. I think they listen. Okay, well. They'll never listen to this one. They'll be like, Todd. We got Todd. They'll try to poach me for my agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how they do it. They get every, that's how they solve podcast guests. Um I forgot what I was talking about. I would that'd be cool one day. If if one day this podcast I I uh, had an agent sit me down, they said if you want to go on tour, you want to start selling out, it's either a big TV gig, big social media, or Joe Rogan. That if you go on Joe Rogan, that tour is going to sell out. And uh, one day I hope the downside will be a leftist alternative for other comedians who want to sell it on the road. I feel like no one thing sells. It's chaos. It sells. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, I've had, haven't had a show that wasn't sold out for 20 years. <laughs> now, my shows aren't sold out quite often. This is the downside. <laughs> one, two, three. Why'd you cut me off? <laughs> You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.